Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shifkumar and in today's video I want to do the toroidal propeller that MIT Labs has basically recently released and they basically have demonstrated that this particular configuration or a design produces much less noise compared to the traditional propellers that we have you know installed on drones. So I thought it would be a good idea to model it and basically test it out, 3D print it and test it out. So in this particular video, I just want to model it using SolidWorks and see, uh, and then eventually send it for 3D printing. But that's the gist of it. So let's have a look at what the uh, MIT lab thing is. So this is the toroidal propeller that they have come up with in the MIT Lincoln Laboratory. And they've done some experiments between the traditional propeller and the one that they've developed and they've realized that the noise reduction in terms of just the acoustic, acoustic or the sound is uh, comparatively better so that when it flies, you don't have the buzzing or hissing sound based on this new configuration. This is the video that they've done basic demonstrations of. Um, if you want to go around, I'll send the links about all of this in the below link uh, in below this description. So let's go and model this using SolidWorks. So I've already basically kind of modeled it, but we'll go step by step to figure out how to build this up. So before I even start a new new um, new project or a new part in this particular case, my goal right now is to basically show you what we have in terms of um, the traditional propeller. So this is a traditional propeller that I've installed on to the um, load stand. 3D printed, as I mentioned, this is open source, so you guys can go check it out if you want to download some of these parts to build your own uh, um, thrust stand. So this is a traditional propeller, and when it rotates, uh, it can produce quite a bit of noise. So let's try to take the dimensions of this in terms of the circumference or the radius, because when it's rotating, uh, the radius will be, we'll try to measure the radius, and then we'll try to build a propeller based on this radius. So I've got a vernier calipers right over here. Uh, let's turn it on and we'll get our basic measurements so that we can try to play with it. So we'll reset it to zero. And what I'll do is basically just have a, keep this, you know, kind of flat. And then let me try to can just give me a minute. It's a little too tight. Should be around 90. So from tip to tip, right from tip to the center, we're looking at around 110. Let's round it to 110 millimeters. So from, say, from the center to the tip, we're looking at around 110 millimeters. Uh, that's around 11 centimeters. So that's basically, if I have this ruler over here from tip to tip, it's gonna be around 11 centimeters. So that's about right. So what we're gonna do right now is, uh, let's go and do this in SolidWorks. What I'm gonna do is go to the top plane. Oh, let's go to the top plane. And in here, we're gonna create a sketch. And we're going to create a circle. Uh, we'll go to sketch, create a circle. Um, yeah, top lane. And what we'll do first is let's create some center line. Uh, maybe put this like this. And we'll create another center line. Something of that sort. And we'll create a circle. Let it be concentric to this, something of that sort. And what we'll do is create a radius, smart dimension. So it should be 11 by 2, basically. Or oh, this should be 110. So if this spins around, this will be 110 around the center. So then we've got basically 220 will be the total um, diameter of when the propeller spins around. So that's what we want to have over here. This is the propeller. Uh, let's create another concentric circle. Uh, circle. 
and let's put the distance between this center and this guy maybe around 3 mm so and we'll explain to you what we built over here and that's the end of the sketch let's name this the propeller cross section okay and it's a good idea uh just give me a minute to whoa to um basically uh yeah my my screen is a little pink so let me just readjust my screen it's in night mode so let me just go to update the uh, turn it off okay now it'll be a lot better <laughs> uh yeah and we don't want you to see our orange screen when I'm recording. Not fun. And I'll put myself on this thing. Uh, yeah, so this is the the screen over here. And what we'll do right now is uh, go to the front plane. And we'll go click normal. And here we'll create a line. Uh, and let's draw a line right somewhere around here to here. And we'll do a smart dimension that is between this and this. And this will give us the path of the um, curvature. So I'm just going to put this as 30 degrees and I'll explain to you exactly what we have over here shortly. And let's put this at around, um, let me take this and let's measure the tip from one. Let me just use the vernier, vernier calipers. So. Uh, reset this you know the vernier calipers is a great tool to just have in your workshop especially when you're doing any solid work or so let's put this as 20 uh, mm 20 mm sounds about good so let's put this as around 20 mm this has some general thickness and what we have over here right now is we'll take we'll take this we we'll go to features and we'll go to swept pause space and in here we'll basically put this and here we go and now as you'll see it's now taken one section of that blade so it's starting to uh, look pretty good now what we'll do next is try to make it a three blade propeller um so what i'm going to do is go to sweep and in here, we're going to go to linear patterns and circular patterns. And the direction, we just choose this bottom, uh, nope. Oopsie. Let's go to linear pattern, circular pattern, and we'll click on this base over here, which is again, not the one that we're looking for. Let me just clear section, okay. We'll want three and this should be around 120. So here we go. So we have, should need two actually. And um, this is the sweep and the face is, we should be a section and put this as, um, not quite actually. What I want to do is take this and put this. So what it's doing is it's taking this edge. So I need to basically rotate it, you know, around the center. Um, and it's not quite um, doing what I want it to do. So uh, let's remove this as well. Uh, the feature that we want is this whole thing and the direction. is um yeah it's not quite i mean so is this is looking about right
Nope. So this is where I had a couple of issues with uh, when I was recording it, and I'm not too sure why it's. Um, basically, we want the axis, right? And we want it to rotate around. So right now it's doing this weird thing, and I don't want it to be doing this. Um, so let me just do this again. Let me just go to the top plane. Let me just go to sweep. And in here we click linear pattern, circular pattern. And this we just want two. This should be around 30 degrees or 120 degrees. And the edge. Um, let's try to do the edge based on the um, Yeah, so now it's doing it based on that edge. Uh, nope. So what it's done, it's basically rotating this around. What is it doing? If I put this as 120. And now, yeah, so now it's done this one and then it's done this one. So it's, yeah, it's basically, and if I do three and then, yeah. Yeah, now it's just like, oh, this is 120. And if I do four, it'll just, yeah, it's just basically not, yeah. So um, I'm just going to cancel this. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, create, go to the origin, go to the front plane, click on this, and I'm just going to create a sketch, center line, from here to here, select this, put this, make this a vertical, we go to sweep, uh, go to features, and then, yeah, I just need to exit this. Um, go to sweep, and we'll go to linear patterns, circular motion. Click on that. And it shouldn't be 15 degrees, it should be 120 degrees. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Uh, so it's around 120 degrees. Um, Let's see how this looks. Appropriate make a pattern of bodies instead. Uh, this should be based on this one. And there is. And the sweep. Yeah, why did it not? Hmm. I could just edit this and put this in the front plane. I'm just going to put a smart dimension between the center and your this says dimension driven cancel okay um wait front plane got the changes okay um i'm gonna click sketch and this one I don't know where this one is going to go and smart dimension in here and here and let's put this as it's gonna be 55 mm oh yeah it's basically half I'm just gonna put this as maybe 40 mm just bring this a little closer we just see how this looks and then what I'm gonna do is go to sweep uh, click on circular sketch pattern
and actually, you know what? Sweep features, linear pattern, circular pattern. This is going to be based on this. Sweep on this. This is going to be 120. Um, we do have some common thing. This should be basically two. And then we have your three. Yeah, there we go. So now it's looking more like uh, the blade. And then you can see there's a few little bit of overlap. Um, and I could very well, yeah, so this is the exact center that we're basically revolving against. Um, which is interesting. So if I have to like look at this and just go to basically the edit sketch. Um, Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is what I want to remove. And I'm just going to go to Smart Dimensions. And we'll try to go to the center. Yeah, actually, you know what? So, yeah, so this is 50, 40. Uh, I could bring this to maybe 30. And everything else should basically be... Yeah, okay, perfect. So, yeah, this is not... Um, So we have this one, and then we have more or less like and then let's go to the circular pattern and we'll edit the feature and then the sweep. My opinion if it's two. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what we want, but, okay, and then we'll do three. Uh, let's see what's happening in here. We'll have a look. So that's what we have over here. And now let's try to basically remove um, these things. So what we want to do is go to insert, we'll go to feature, and here we'll click on intersect. And this is one intersection. Actually, you know what, we need to go to circular pattern and we need to make them different bodies. So uh, the way we do this is to uh, instance to very, way, way we do this is we create bodies. Um, and this is one body. And then all of this should be solid bodies. So now each one of these are solid bodies, which is exactly what we want. Um, and now what we'll do is uh, basically um, go to insert features. We'll go to click intersect. This is an intersection. This is an intersection. We'll click create both. And the thing that we want to remove is this one from yeah, that's basically it. And then we click on this. So now it's basically got that. We will want to remove this and this. So we'll click insert features, intersect year and year. And we'll click and this one. Oh, okay. One thing that we want to do is go to intersect. We we'll edit this feature and we'll click do not merge results so that they're different bodies, which is important. And then we'll go to insert features, intersect this body and this body will create an intersect and what we want to remove is this one and it's starting to look almost right and the next thing we want to do is remove this guy so we'll go to insert features intersect we'll create we'll uh, again we we'll go to intersect and then we don't want to merge results so we'll click on this and then we'll go to insert features intersect and we'll create touch this body and we'll touch this body click on intersect and we'll remove this and here we go so now we have yeah something of this sort um one thing that i might still want to do 
is I just think that we have like yeah this sketch over here I believe can be slightly um we'll see if this works it may or may not work let's change this to like 25 and we'll do this and we'll try to do this and this might break everything yeah it did break a little bit but that's fine I think we we, we should be okay with this because for the most part everything is flat it's looking good okay now let's go to the top view and I'll tell you why it's okay now we'll do the center part uh, and what we'll do is just look at this so this is the center part right now and what we want is approximately let me turn this on let me uh, reset this and now let's try to take the center and that would be something around we're looking at 17.5 in diameter um, Yeah, 17.8 or something like that. Um, let me open this. So to open this, I had actually just tightened it. Up. So let me just untighten it. So there'll be two holes normally on these things. So you just basically take something that's really small like this. And then... You can untighten it on thing it. So let's take the propeller. and uh, let's do this again so this is going to be zero and in here we're going to basically update this 18 so 18 18 mm so let's try this as 18 mm so i'm going to go on the top plane and we're going to click a sketch and we'll click center um right at the center and what we'll do over here smart dimensions let this be 18 or 19 mm nope but this is 19 that's fine should shouldn't be shouldn't be it's okay and then what we'll do is we'll measure the center part so let's reset this that's 4.69 so let's zoom in we go to the top plane zoom in we we'll create another circle right at the center both are cos and centric, smart dimension. This in between this and this should be 4.69. Okay, uh, perfect. But there is something else that I want to check out. So there's a small little hole right in the center. So let's basically do this again right in here and that's 6.17 right the middle hole over here so that's the dimension of 6.17 let's go in in here and we'll create another circle in here and this is going to be a smart dimension of 6.17 alrighty um, this is going to be 4.69 I'm just going to note this down because I don't um, we may not need this one, but this, we can measure this again. I'm just going to delete this. And what we'll do right now is we're going to click on features and we'll click extrude bar space. And we'll just click on through all. Something like that. And we want this from one surface to the other. So I'm just going to click on mid plane. Actually, we'll go this to through all and it'll be less, something like that. Here we go. So right at the center. Yeah. 
something of the sort. Okay. And then we'll create this 4.69 thing. So we'll create another circle. So this will be the center center blade. Because of dimensional uh, issues, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make this slightly bigger. So I just want to make this slightly bigger. Uh, maybe six point tolerances. I'm just going to put this as six point maybe three or five. Yeah, it's just, you know, 3D printing, it may not be accurate. Okay. Um, and yeah, you can see it's not going completely through. So what we want to do is create, um, go to top plane. I'm just going to create a sketch, go right into the center, put this, select this, and then the feature, we're just going to go to extrude cut um, through all right from year to year. Uh, it should be actually the other way. And there we go. And this will cut everything through it. So now this is the center hole, center cut. I'm gonna put a rename this as center hole. And then what we want is um, on this plane, I'm just gonna click on sketch and we'll create a circle. And this is going to be a dimension of maybe 4.69. And here is going to be, the difference is going to be 4.69. I believe so. Let me do this again. Um, let's do this again and let's try to take this dimension. This is going to be 4.51, 4.51. So the distance between it's going to be around 4.51. Yeah, it's, um, Yeah, and what I'm going to do is create a feature. Let's go to extrude boss base. Uh, and this is going to be a blind and this might be, how much would this be? So it's just a lot of measurements, isn't it? Uh, I'm just going to put 0 0.5, a 5 mm. And we'll just put this as 5 mm. Or maybe less. Yeah, maybe less. Um, let's edit this. Oh, yeah, let me edit this. And put this at maybe 4.5. 4 mm. Uh, looks about right. Why is this? Yeah. And we'll just go in here. Let's click on the sketch and what do we do over here? 4.51. And the same thing we'll want to do with the, um, with a cancel. And the same thing we want to do it on this side. We're just going to basically create a sketch, put a circle right in the middle. And small dimensions between this and this will be 4.51. And here we're just going to basically again do a feature. There's also going to be an extrude cut. It's going to be blind. It's going to put 4 mm. Um, and yeah, there we go. So this is that. So here we have a 4 1 mm. Here we have a 4 mm something of this sort so yes yeah, looking good so if we compare this to center because it needs to fit in the propeller so we've got like 
yeah it's just it's, it looks okay then now we'll just chamfer a little bit of the edges uh just to give it a uh we don't want it to be uh, let's add in some fillets and let's put this as we'll just fillet this one put this as 2 mm we'll fillet this one and then see how this looks yeah it's looking not bad and then we'll fillet these guys we'll add another fillet and let's click on this one and we put this at 1 mm this is no not this one then we put this at 1 mm and this at 1 ah come on nope 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 uh, let me just clear selections we'll put this as 0 0.5 let me better that's one that's two that's three and we'll go on the other side that's four that's five that's six no you don't want face clear selection Ah, oh, come on. One, two, no face. Three, then four, Yeah, I just want to edit this and add this. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, and now it's looking more like the propeller. And yeah, now let's save this. So all I'm going to do is create a new folder. I'm just going to click this as live and you will click on propeller. Dorido propeller. Okay, true the propeller live. All right, perfect. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, let's go to the appearances tab. And since I only have a black PTG, uh, let's go to set and finish. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is uh, basically remove this. Uh, just assign this as a black color. That's the render. Uh, what we can do is basically go to the file, uh, click on print 3D. And uh, the bottom plane could be, let's put this as the bottom plane, right? Yep. Ooh, it may, may or not fit. We'll find out. <laughs> save to file. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, save to file. We're going to do this as a 3D manufacturing. We'll click save file. Let's see if it, fit, it will fit in my Prusa uh, thing. Otherwise, we'll, we were going to run into trouble. Uh, the following global graphic. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. Now let's go to Prusa or the Prusa slicer. And we'll see if it fits <laughs> with all this effort. We don't want it to not fit, right? Uh, let's have a look. All right, so let's bring this in here. Click on file. Let's click on open recent project. Uh, I'm just going to go in here, click on live, and we'll see how this works. Whoa, it may not fit. Uh, let's find out. Uh, X is going to be, it's ready. This is 90. Well, where did it go? Also, the print area was detected. Yeah. So the only way it can fit in is, yeah, I cannot print like this. Um, so we got to reduce the dimensions. Um, this is going to be interesting. I'm just going to, like, let me just check this on the, on, on my Prusa itself and see, you know, if it actually fits in. So these propellers do fit in the Prusa, um, I, you know, MP3, like the way it is. And I'm trying to base, base, base it on this dimension. So I've clearly got some dimensioning wrong, uh, because this is huge, right? Like. Like, look at this guy. 
it's huge so let's go back to solidworks um we're just gonna cancel this we don't need this anymore okay um so we can go to the sweep this is the propeller dimension so if this is 110 from where to where is 110 but i want to know from the center so let's try to see if we can reduce this so if this is 110 let's try to make this as because from the center the year will be a little more so and the offset might be like another 20 millimeters so it should be around 90. let's see if this works and yeah let's see if this works this might break all the dimensions stop and repair close okay so okay the fillets which part is okay what's wrong with this Missing edge. Okay. So one is this one. And one is going to be, yeah, we, oh, okay, got it. This is going to be, I think. Yeah. So what I could do is uh, go to. Yeah, let's take this appearance and put this more like white. Yeah, whatever this is gonna be. Uh, good appearances, and we'll just put this as. So it's it's outside the dimensions, right? So let's not not get ourselves. So this on top looks okay. Um, I'm going to. Uh, not this one. Not this one. Yeah, and then edit sketch. Actually, it's not the sketch, it's the discard changes, it's the feature. So yeah, I'm just gonna click on edit. And because I have this through all, I'm just gonna click this mid plane. And you don't have to merge this out, so maybe we could. Um for mm I'm just gonna look at what we have over here. Um when we get here, we're looking at around 10 mm. Yeah, so this is 10 mm from edge to edge. So uh, I'm just going to put this as 10 mm. Okay, uh, wait a minute. Edit. This is mid plane. We want this to be, okay, uh huh. So we want the plane to be. Okay, so hmm. top lane. Where's the top lane? This is the top lane. Boss exclude. I have to edit the sketch plane and kind of have this like, yeah, it is going to be in the top plane, but we want this to, um, want this to go through completely right so that's the reason why it's giving issues so so this is what's going to happen so we're going to go to top plane um and then 
if this whole thing is um let me erase this sketch if this whole thing is between this and this let me go to smart dimensions between year and year and this will be driven this is 10 mm so it's going to be 5 mm okay okay so basically discard all changes um what i'm going to do is go to top plane and then i'm going to basically click control move this and this is going to be 5 mm and that's going to be basically wait this cannot be 5 mm yeah that's 5 mm uh, right from top plane and we'll just click on and i'm just going to final reference second reference and then we'll do this this plane is going to be the center center plane let me rename this yeah and then this one i'm just going to move edit sketch plane and it's going to be on center plane okay stop and repair okay close yeah the reason being is because center plane is here i want to move the center plane like right here the center plane yeah center plane should go like maybe even like like here right yeah okay and then i can go over here and then click move this and then take this to the center plane and then that's the continue stop and repair some fillets close yeah i could remove all the fillets basically that's not a problem yes okay and uh where are we right now oh yeah thanks where is the center plane oh okay so we got to do this again front plane top plane control move this 5 mm save this name this center plane all right then we go to the top then we go to this plane and then we'll click sketch and in here we'll click a center and that will be somewhere around here smart dimensions this was not 4mm let's do this again very quickly Eighteen point five, just gonna be a little rough and little thing to get everything kind of like eighteen point five. Perfect. And now let's go to features, extra boss base. This is gonna be mid plane, and the whole thing is gonna be ten. Done. And if you want this to be a slightly bigger, we can basically make this. What the heck? It is features, and yeah, we can make this maybe uh, 12 if we have to. So yeah, this is going to be slightly bigger, and this is going to be slightly bigger. Okay. And then we'll go into the center hole. And this is going to be around six or four. It's going to be six. Okay, so we'll go in here. Once again, right in through here, we'll create center plane go to sketch 6mm I'm gonna click on the center put this smart dimensions put this as 6mm go to features and this should be an extrude cut now we'll click this on mid plane 
and it should also be around 10 mm. Wait, why did it not cut? Maybe just put this as like, oh, this is 12, right? We put this as 12. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Looking a lot better right now. I'm just going to save this as file 2. Save as and put this as live 2. Don't want to overwrite what we've done. It's just good practice anyways. And the last but not the least is to get the minimum dimensions. Just to get the inner dimensions. This one. And this is 4.63. Okay. So let's go to 4.63. Again, I'm going to go to the center plane. Click on sketch. Create a circle. Right from here to here. Smart dimension between here and here. This is going to be 4.63. Nope. Not this. Smart dimensions. This. And this must be 4.63. And actually, it's wrong. I made a mistake. This car changes an exit. Yeah. I'll need to go on this surface and then click on Edit and then create a circle. And then we'll do Smart Dimensions between year and year. And now this should be 4.63. Nope. This and this. Smart dimensions between year and year must be 4.63. Okay, and this and this must be concentric. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, and then we'll go to Feature, we'll go to Extrude Cut, and then we'll just basically put this, uh, this could be basically blind, and this could be approximately 5 mm. And here we go. Yeah. And then we'll go to the other side. Same thing. We'll just go over here, click on Sketch. Uh, we'll go over here. Put this smart dimensions between this one and this one. Nope. Year and year must be. Come on. Don't need this. Nope. What is happening? Smart dimensions. Remove this. Between year and year 4.63. Perfect. Features, exclude cut, and this will be approximately 5 mm. And here we go. All right. And now we'll do the fillet. Uh, let's go to the fillets. And we'll just put everything as 5 mm. Just, just keep everything simple right now. 5 mm. This is 5 mm. 5 mm. 5 mm. Because you don't want it to be too... Um, it's also easier for printing. 5 mm, 5 mm, 5 mm, 5 mm, and here we go. Done. All right. Now let's go to file. We'll go to print 3D. It might be smaller. I hope it's smaller. We can choose maybe this section. Hopefully, um, it's still, I don't know. All right. Click save file, and yeah, I could, and I could basically uh, save file, and then we'll do this as live two. Okay, okay, all right, and then we we'll go to Prusa, and we'll see. I'll uh, we'll just delete this, and we we'll just click file, open project. No, clearly I'm doing it in a, probably not the best way. But we'll try to rotate this by 90. Okay, perfect. So it does fit right now. Like, just barely fits. Woohoo! That's a win for me. All right, I'll print this and we'll see how it goes. 
so yeah, <laughs> I mean, it took me, it took a, it took a while for me to like figure out what was happening. Uh, because the first dimension was clearly bigger than what my print bed could print. And the second time when I shrunk it, all the fillets basically weren't working and I had to just delete everything and redo the kind of redo almost the propeller again. So it's kind of like practice, I guess. Um, this is not based on any mathematical calculations. This is just based on purely eyeballing what I'm seeing on from the MIT paper. But I think it's a good start, right? Uh, you kind of like build on to that. You dimension the thing, you look, you eyeball certain things, you sketch it, you build it, and then you test the performance. That's exactly why something like a thrust stand would help because now I can mathematically calculate the force that it would generate. Um, the sound, I can just, you know, use my, any audio to any audio uh, mic, uh, any mic would be able to sense the amount of noise it's making. Um, yeah, and all the cool stuff that basically goes into um, designing a propeller. So so we have test equipments, but we first need to build a propeller and then do some research and analysis. And of course, uh, the next thing we do is go more math mathematical or first principle modeling where you do things like momentum theory and then blade element theory, which will go find, which will goes right into the theory and mathematics of how do you construct the blade. And then from there, you know, you apply a lot more stuff. Um, that would be a video that I'll be probably doing shortly going to the physics of how do you design propellers uh something that i'm studying as as we speak so it would be great to you know, share some of my knowledge um yeah so having said that that's uh basically we have done the propeller uh finally uh it took almost uh, 15 minutes to build it i'm pretty sure now if you know out of practice it will probably take half an hour and eventually a five minutes job mm. uh but when you're starting off with a new tool uh, it just takes time basically that yeah. So the next thing that I'm going to do is basically um, just to get you a, give a sense of what I'm going to do next is uh, take in my, what do you call it, my memory card. So we're going to take in the memory card and I'm going to basically insert this into the Prusa press slicer. And let's get that started actually. So my laptop. We go in here. And you yeah, might avoid the noise. We're gonna go to export this to the SD card, and I'm gonna put the toroidal propeller. We're gonna put this as it's gonna be. Do you know what? Let's see how much time it takes to build this. This will take three hours and four twenty-seven minutes. Okay, and we're gonna put an infill of twenty. I'm going to put an infill of 15 because it's fine. I don't need it to be. Uh, let's click slice now. It's still going to be around 3 hours, 25 minutes. Um, it's got a lot of things happening in here, right? Okay. Um, yeah, fair enough. It's going to take 3 hours, 25 minutes. Um, that's fine. I don't have the new Bamboo Labs thing. So let's see how it goes. And what I'll do is just click File, Export, uh, Export G Code to Flash Drive. And then we click the Toroidal and we click Save. 3 hours 25 minutes and now it'll export and now we can eject it all right um now that i have it in the flash drive i'm going to go to prusa and we'll see uh, how it works So in my Prusa settings, I am going to, I know you can't see this. I'm just going to basically reduce the, lower this a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's still not too clear. So, but what we'll do is we'll go to um, print from SD card and toroidal propeller. Now the bed is heating. Um, it's going to take a little while, maybe like three to five minutes to heat the bed, heat the nozzle. I'll print it in PETG, in black. That's the only color, the filament that I have in PETG. And in probably, um, maybe I'll do a follow-up video showing you know, how it's 3D printed and maybe even try to, you know, make it work. All right. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, thanks a lot for sticking. If you want to, if you want to know more about learning SolidWorks, you can practice along. Um, it'll just, you know, build up your skill sets. Um, and until next time, take care and thank you so much.